Radio! UFC 285, I'm here with Bo Nickel. Bo, checks, thanks for checking in with me, dog. Of course. You're a wrestler, though. Now, you showed up here in your running shoes, son? I mean, look at this, my boy, Bo Nickel. <laughs> Bo, you're the dog. So you got, and I'm a ball buster, as you guys know, so I, I've known this kid for a while, so. But you got that main car mentality. Well, you suit that. Like, you got to get the, get dolled up a little bit for him. I keep it uh, I keep it casual for the most part, but I'll bust the suit out for the press conference. Yeah. So I'm ready to go. That's what I'm talking yeah, yeah. about. I'm ready to go. How's it feel? How's it feel? Yeah, it's it's pretty cool, you know, just being in this position. I uh, kind of think like, you know, back I, I only started MMA a year and a half ago, and so it's gone really fast. Like to be here where I'm at now is pretty crazy, but I feel ready. I feel you know just excited to embrace the moment, and you know all my experience of competing. I'm sure that uh, you know. That means a lot to me, and I'm sure it'll mean a lot in the fight. You know, I have gotten a lot of shit because of some of the claims I make about you. Because they'll say stuff like, uh, could you talk about Bull Nickel? And I'm like, well, he's going to be the greatest middleweight of all time. He's going to beat everybody, and he's ready to fight guys in the top ten right now. And they say that's my wrestling bias. But I believe it. <laughs> to those people who doubt you still, what do you say to them? You know, it's, it's really interesting because I would say coming into MMA, um, there's definitely just a lot of attention on the sport. And so you hear those those negative voices. But overall, like 95 percent of people that talk to me are super positive and believe in me. And so I think the, you know, short uh, few people that can't that don't really believe in me. I think they don't really know me. They don't yeah. know what I've been through. They don't understand what it's like to be a collegiate athlete in the NCAA competing at the highest level. They don't understand how hard I work. They don't listen to interviews of how I talk about the sport, my mindset. And so they just want to put a label on me and, and try to bring me down because, you know, in their mind it's unrealistic. But they, they don't know me at all. To be that, to have that expectation, it's unrealistic. Yeah. But why in the world, right? You can have a thousand positive, yeah. but there's like two negative yeah. and you're like locking on They're the negative. The like, what is that? I don't know, man. I think, it's the uh, worst. I think it's just competitive nature, right? Like, yeah. I just want to prove, like, if somebody doesn't believe in me, I just want to prove them wrong, right? I just want to like, you know, I'm not like necessarily a mean guy, but I do want to like shove it in their face a little bit. Yeah. Like, if we get competitive, like, playing whatever it could be a board game and my boy's talking trash like at the end if i win like you're gonna get it a little bit that's like the thing that i think makes most wrestlers relatable because yep. we're just like insanely competitive <laughs> you don't want to lose right. in anything it doesn't matter and that yeah. comes from being in that sport where it's one-on-one -on -one all the time you know i think the one thing that and i mean if i'm recalling this correctly you and miles martin mm -hmm. right he got you in the big tens yep. then you pinned him right, right? i think that moment to me yeah. is what I feel prepares you most for what you're about to undertake because to have to rebuild after a week or two weeks it's not long right to come back from that yeah. and deal with the adversity of and because you very rarely lost right so to take a loss big tens two weeks later you pin the guy yep. that adversity and your ability to get through that I think will prepare you for what you're gonna see soon because it'll be Jamie Pickett this weekend mm -hmm. It'll be another guy like Jamie Pickett, and then it'll be the best fighters in the world. Right. Because you're going to fight in a way that it makes you have to have that. For sure. How much can you take from your wrestling career and apply it to the journey that you're starting now? Yeah, you know, so much. I think that, you know, just the experience of competing in a big crowd in a big event, and uh, not only the experience of doing that, but getting both ends of the spectrum of, of winning and of losing, right? Yeah. Like, I've lost in front of a lot of people, right? Like, I haven't lost much, but the, the times I have lost, it's been really, really big. And, uh, you know, you, you brought up Miles Martin, and now I look back at my college career, like, I'm so grateful to have had a guy to push me, like, a, yeah. ri a really a rival that, uh, you know, was, was able to, you know, I was able to beat him, he was able to beat me, and we, we had a, a good, you know, it, it really made me better. And so now I look at all of that experience of failing when the pressure was on, of succeeding when the pressure was on, and now it's like that just up a little bit, up a, yeah. up a notch. And so most people, they're kind of coming from nothing to all of a sudden they're in this spotlight. Yeah. I've had a, a slow kind of build, right? Youth wrestling, state championships in high school, NCA, and now I'm in the UFC. And uh, I think that like life experience and the what that has done has just really prepared me for this. Not that it's, that was bigger, right? Like this is bigger, but I've been able to build to it. Yeah, absolutely. And this is the one thing I think people miss. In wrestling, everybody's like, phenomenal at that one skill yeah but in mma it's like they're maybe not as good at wrestling but they have the striking yeah. but you ultimately have that 
that superior wrestling pedigree. Right. The guys that you see in the octagon won't have that ability. How sure are you that you can impose that style of fighting on whoever you want? Right. Well, 100%. You know, there's, there's no doubt in my mind that anyone in the UFC, I'll be able to impose that style just because I'm still competing against the absolute best wrestlers in the world day in, day out at Penn State. Right? Dude, like, it's crazy what I you guys still have get a, Yeah, like I still get to train with those guys and I know how I'm doing in the room there. I know right now, like if I put my all into wrestling, I'll be the Olympic gold medalist in 2024, right? I'm more passionate about MMA, so I want to achieve that. But knowing that I can go out there and throw down a dude and pin him who he's been he's been wrestling his whole life. He's been wrestling twenty years. Yeah. What's a dude that's been never wrestled in their life can Or do? wrestling in training camp. Yeah, that's not the That same. was always yeah. the thing that like gave yeah. me confidence. I'm like, this dude has been tra- wrestling for eight weeks. Yeah. How's he gonna be able to stop me from taking him to the ground? Exactly. Yeah, like I've got twenty years, you got eight weeks, it just doesn't add up. Do some, no. the math doesn't work. So I followed your career for a long time, obviously. I remember you wrestling in Texas. Uh, was it the Texas Dynamite or something y'all used to wrestle? That was one of the clubs. Yeah. <laughs> like, was that uh, like the Texas Dynamite or some shit Dallas like that? Dynamite, yeah. Dynamite. Dallas Dynamite. Dallas Dynamite. Yeah, you wrestled for the Dallas Dynamite. <laughs> and then watch you go to Penn State and, and high school uh, and everything, being one of the best. And then you get into MMA. And then I start hearing that your mom's a boxing coach. Where the fuck was this information your entire life? Like, yeah. where was this information? So my mom, uh, we, I, before I moved to Texas, I lived in Albuquerque. And so my yeah. mom uh, just got into boxing and she trained at Jackson Wink a little <laughs> bit. And she had like five amateur boxing fights. So she always just like loved uh, sports. She played college basketball and stuff. And with my dad uh, being a wrestling coach, she just got into combat sports, you know, and then she got an opportunity actually to like, uh, fight there was a it was police versus firefighters like a charity event yeah and there was no female firefighter but there was a female police officer so they asked her if she would fight and she was like all right i'll do it and she trained <laughs> for like six weeks won the fight and then was like i really like this so yeah. then she started you know she had a few more amateur fights and uh i think i mean she started later like she had four kids at the time and a job but like she just loved it and enjoyed it and so that was kind of like a normal thing for me so how much did she impart on you as you were growing up like were you guys hitting pads in boxing as kids because no, you seem yeah. pretty you seem pretty set on your feet yeah. like you're not lost like most of us as wrestlers most of us are throwing the overhand right and then diving for the legs yeah. when we first start you don't seem like as confused in the stand-up no I, I feel pretty good in the stand-up you know I, I would say like with my mom and I growing up it was more like playing around sparring touching and she would yeah. she pretty much could beat me up until i was like 17 so uh <laughs> i didn't want to i didn't want to get in there too much with her but uh yeah now like moving into mma i i'm fortunate i have a really good boxing coach his mm-hmm. uh he's, he's my age is an mma fighter as well but he grew up boxing in philly uh named uh, moose and uh so he had probably 60 70 amateur boxing matches yeah. and he was a collegiate national champion boxing got a scholarship to penn state to box and so I'm able to work with him and he just has those fundamentals that like, you know, even if you go into an MMA uh, gym where a striking guy, he's teaching you like MMA striking, whereas Moose is legit boxing, Boxing, like Philly style striking. My yep. guy was an Olympic alternate, yeah. and I just wanted the pure boxing guy it's, yeah. to help me develop the skills in the sweet science. Bo, before you started this MMA journey, here's the thing about MMA, a lot of ego. Yeah. Right, yeah. but you went and you grappled against that guy, Nick Rodriguez. I think his Gordon name. Gordon Ryan. Gordon, yeah. I don't know. I, Gordon Ryan. <laughs> it doesn't right. matter, right? You lose to him. It doesn't matter, right? I go and I challenge myself in these ways. Mm-hmm. There's just no ego about it. That comes from wrestling, right? The ups and the downs. So you can really take on this MMA with a pretty clear conscience, right? Yeah, I feel like you know, for me, having just thousands and thousands of reps in competition, and you have as a kid, like. You know, I'm wrestling all the best kids in the country traveling around. Constantly. Constantly. And you, you kind of have to learn to deal with loss and deal with adversity. And uh, if, you, if you get overconfident, if you get cocky, if you think, think you can't be beat, you're always going to be humbled, right? Yeah. You know, and I think that every wrestler that started as a kid that had a lot of success has experienced that at one point. And so for me, I realized that at the end of the day, like winning and losing, that doesn't change me as a person. Yeah. My value is just in my best effort, right? Like yeah, I want to yeah. go get better every single day. And if I put my best effort out in the fight, regardless of whether I win or lose, I'm gonna be happy with that. Yeah. Let's get to the fight. Jamie Pickett, yeah. minus 1,600. Yeah. Minus 1,600. That's gotta be one of the bigger favorites I've ever seen yeah. in MMA. But with that comes an expectation of what the fight's supposed to look like. Right. Do you feel that? Do you feel any pressure in that regard that you gotta not only win, but dominate in your first time 
fighting in the UFC and then calling for a main card slot? You were like, if I'm not on the main card, I might as well retire. <laughs> like, that's crazy. That's a crazy thought, and then you get it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's kind of funny because a lot of people were mad at me about that. Like, oh, this, that. I'm like, well, at the end of the day, it's not my call. But the UFC thought the same as me, so yeah. we're here now. Um, but as far as, like, the pressure and stuff, you know, I definitely do feel it, right? Like, people expect me to go out there and finish this guy. I'm a big favorite. Yeah. Um, but I would say that that really aligns with how I feel internally, too, you know? So it's not like out of alignment. I feel very aligned in that my expectation is a first-round finish. I want to go out there, dominate, smash this guy. And so it's not any different from what anybody else thinks. And I feel more pressure for myself than I do from anyone else. I spoke to him in the back a little bit ago, and he goes, everybody expects me to lose, but I'm here to shock the world, right? <laughs> A lot of people say that. Yeah, I mean, I've, people have been saying that about me since, like, I was a kid, right? Like, yeah. you know, when I was, I think, eight or nine years old, this is a crazy story, I wrestled at, I was wrestling a home tournament, right, like, in Wyoming. I lived in Wyoming at the time. <laughs> and uh, a little gym, and uh, I got pinned in a headlock. This kid yeah. choked me out, pinned me, and I was devastated. I was crying, right? Two weeks later, we go uh, to the tournament. This kid that I wrestled is wearing a shirt. says, I beat Bo Nickel. And Come has the on. date on it. Swear, bro, I'm, like, nine years old. <laughs> That's what I've been dealing with since I was a little kid. So everybody's always coming for me. Everybody's always going to shock the world. And yeah, have I lost a few times? Yeah, I have. You know, and at the end of the day, everybody's going to give their best to me. But you know, as, as a 27-year-old man with a lot of life experience, I feel fully prepared for whatever happens in there. And so you know, if he expects to shock the world, I think he's going to be more shocked than anyone else. You know, it's, uh, there's pressure in everything. Pressure in wrestling, pressure in fighting. You make a UFC de debut this weekend. But I'll tell you what a real, real pressure lies. Making a good steak. <laughs> right? Hey, is that not? No, steak Sundays. Yeah. Steak Sundays are one of my favorite Instagram things that I do. Yeah. Every Sunday, yeah. I'm like, let's see what Bo Nickel is making. Like, yeah. well, where did this start, right? This idea yeah. to make these, I mean, some good cuts of meat. And then your face, when you cut it with the nice knife, and yeah. it's like it's the best steak Dude. I've ever seen someone eat. I love it, bro. I love it. I've always loved, uh, you know, I grew up like, my dad loved grilling. He would always like grill us steaks and stuff like that. And that was like a big treat, you know, as a kid. And so when I got into college, like one of the first things I, I purchased was a grill. And yeah. just started messing around, fiddling around. And I just have always, always loved it. It's something that just like hits close to home with me. And uh, my social media guy actually had the idea. He's like, dude, because I'm always grilling steaks anyways. He's like, we should start doing a steak Sunday thing. And so my guy Ronan, who does all my social, was like, he set it up. And then, yeah, we've been filming, so I'm just happy to share with people because I love doing it. Why you got to cut it so slow, though? Hey, you, <laughs> why you, why you got to cut the steak so slow, though? Like, you cut the steak super slow. Yeah, why? yeah, just, you, you know. You got to see how moist it is. Yeah, man. I want to make it a little dramatic for the Yeah, people, like, you make know? sure you see all the juice, how yeah, tender it is. 100%. Well, you look a little bigger. You look like you put on some muscle as you're getting ready to... Yeah, I did. So, you know, I, I had normally been probably 202 to 204, like, just regularly, mm -hmm. and I decided, you know... The, the weigh-ins are so different in MMA than wrestling, right? 30 hours. Yeah, you get such a long time. So, you know, I talked with my uh, strength coach and uh, my nutritionist, and they're like, we can get you up a little heavier. So I'm coming in. I started this camp coming down from about 207. Good. So I'm quite a bit uh, bigger. I feel, feel good and solid. And, yeah, just, you know, make sure that every single thing that I'm doing is, like, completely on point. How does the fight end on Saturday night? First round finish for sure. Yeah. Knockout or submission? Because that transition to the triangle last time was sick. Thank you. Yo, that triangle yeah. transition. I was like, yo, this dude, grab was nice. I was I like, dude, grapple. Jiu yeah, bro. That was nice. Thank you. Um, you know, it's hard to predict uh, with fighting, you know, because like, you know, I, I think that more than likely I'll probably submit him. Um, but you land a big shot and it's like, it's over, right? Like, I definitely have knockout power. And mm -hmm. so I think he's going to be really worried about the wrestling, which opens up the striking, yeah. as you know. Uh, but... I think more than likely a submission, but you never know. I might, I might put him out. Last one before I let you go. Is it odd when you start seeing guys, are you self-compared to guys like Hamza Chemaev and all those guys that have that much hype around them? Is it odd when you see that? Are those guys like even saying your name when you're just getting started? It definitely is odd. You know, it's, it's been crazy the amount of attention I've got. You know, I think relative to most fighters or really any fighters, the, the attention I've got is pretty unprecedented. Yeah. And so... Hearing, you know, people talking about me, calling me out, stuff that guys have been fighting the UFC forever that are, you know, top-ranked guys. It's uh, it's definitely something I'm more grateful for it than anything because it's like I've been barely training. I'm already on these people's minds and, yeah. you know, they're on my mind too. You know, I'm, I'm obviously thinking about this fight first and foremost, but at the end of the day, my goal is to be pound for pound number one fighter in the world and I have to, I want to beat all the best guys to get there. And all those guys 
it's all about matchups. Yep. Anybody you think you can compete with. Anybody. Yeah, for sure. Even today, like a year and a half in, you think you can compete with any fighter in the world. 100%. You know, I think that um, I'm going to continue to get better and better, obviously. I think right now where I'm at, uh, my skill set, there's really nobody that can do what I can do as far as wrestling goes. Like I was saying, you put the be- some of the best wrestlers in the world against me, I can still throw those guys down and pin them. What's yeah. a guy supposed to do that's never wrestled in his life? You know, like, uh, and, and, and I don't think most people won't understand that. They won't understand what that means. Like, They're going to think you're arrogant. Yeah, yeah. But the reality is, like, I'm taking grown men in a wrestling sense. I'm throwing them down, right? Put people that have never wrestled in their life against me. People that don't understand, like, what, what we understand, yeah. they're not going to be able to relate to that or understand. Yeah. yeah. It, took, it took Alex Pajeda a year. Can you envision a year from now being in a position where you could be challenged for a championship? You know, I think it's definitely possible. Just with the way it's gone in the last year and a half for me has been super crazy. So with fighting, you never know, right? Like things happen really quickly. And uh, I think that that, that could, be, uh, could be realistic. But at the same time for me, the goal isn't just to be the UFC champ, right? Like I think right the now, best in the world. I want to be the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. And so I have to develop and get better and continue to improve to, to get to that point. I don't think I'm the pound for pound best guy in the world right now, but that's where I want to be. And so that's why I'm continuing to work and put in all the time and energy and effort to get there. Guys, you'll get no arguments from me. I'm all in on Bo Nickel. Uber, Uber prospect Bo Nickel makes his UFC debut this weekend, UFC 285. On the main card, like he told y'all. So y'all make sure y'all press that buy button so y'all can take him in because I've seen it. I've seen it on the wrestling mat since he was a child. And I have seen it on the Contender Series. I believe this kid has a bright future ahead of him. And I'm calling him a kid because he's 27. I'm 43. I'm an old man, so I can call him a kid. But he's got a bright future. Make sure you tune in to catch Bo Nickel Take on Jamie Pickett at UFC 285. Until then, like, subscribe, tell your friend to tell their friend that DC's got a YouTube channel. Until next time, guys. Bo, thanks for checking in with me, bro. I appreciate it. Peace.